All right, I think we are live. Exactly on time. So I'm going to have a look at everything. Let's see if everything is doing fine. Let's look at the chat. All right. I think everything's working. Let me know. There are already a few people online. So just let me know if you can hear me all right. Let's put this drawing in frame as well. So just say hi if you're there. And today I'm going to be finishing off this one, or I, I hope I'm going to finish it. Um, I think I'll just keep drawing until it's done. So I think that will be about one and a half hours or maybe two hours even. Um, but I've already done the uh, background last week and the first part of the beak. So I hope it will not take too long to finish it. Oh, hi, Jodine. Great. Nice to see you here. Hi, Elina. How are you all doing tonight? It's really hot here in the Netherlands. It's starting to become a little sweaty in the studio. Luckily, not as bad as my previous home was. It was way harder to work there in the summer, but right now it's actually pretty okay. So I'll just wait um, for a few minutes before I start drawing. Just wait a little bit for everyone to come in. Oh, hi, Marion. I think there's a little bit of lag in the video. So I'll have to wait a little bit for the comments to come in. Hi, it's Talia. I hope I'm saying that right. Hello from Brazil. Nice. Really fun. How many um, different countries do we have in the stream today? My streaming time is not that great for all countries. But I hope to have some different ones. Hi, Michelle from Canada. What's the time there right now? It must be like pretty early, right? Okay, so as you can see, we have the image on frame. We have the reference photo in frame. So that's my own reference photo that I took a couple of years ago. And um, the previous stream is still online as well. So you can watch that one if you've missed it. And today I'm just going to continue with it and talk you through the process. And in the meantime, I'll be looking at the, uh, the comments. And you can also or ask me questions when I'm working. So I'll just keep looking at the comments while I'm drawing as well. So um, I can always answer questions in the meantime or just chat. Colleen says, good morning from Idaho. Oh, Jodine from USA. I know you. I've been following you for a long time. I think we're on Facebook, right? Okay, so pretty early in the USA. So, oh, hi, K, K drawing or KD drawing. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. I'm very fine. I've been painting today. I've been working today. Everything's going uh, according to schedule, so that's nice. <laughs> and I've been working on a Patreon tutorial as well. So actually, that's this one. I have it here. This um, little flamingo. I hope you can see it. So that's in color pencil and I'm working for on, on that one for Patreon. So the part one is up since today. Hi, Marta. Hi, Denny. Oh, Noella. Hi. 
I'm going to try to pronounce all your names um, alright, but I'm not sure if I'll manage. Okay, so let's just get started. So you can draw along if you want to. You can draw along with the whole thing. It will just stay online, so feel free to draw this one if you want to. And I'll um, continue with the beak because I ended there last week. So I'm going to get started with a little base layer of orange. In the meantime, I'll keep looking at the comments as well, starting with 221. And I'm just going to put down a little bit of a light base layer here. Oh, by the way, I'm working with Stabilo Carbothello pastel pencils on pastel mats. And the size is about 8 by 8 inches. Hi, Allison. Allison says, can you do more streams like this? Well, I'm planning to. So I will do a weekly stream in June. So there will be two more streams on Tuesday, at least, in June. And then I will see what I can manage. So weekly streams, it, it takes quite a lot of time. So I'm not sure if I will continue the weekly thing. Um, and I'm also planning to pick up music as well. Usually band um, rehearsals are at night. So I'm not sure if I will manage weekly streams after this summer, but I can continue them until I um, can't anymore. So there will be weekly live streams. So this is a very bright color, so I don't want too much of it. I just put down a very light base layer and then I will tone it down with some other colors as well. Definitely let me know what you want to see after this one. So I hope after tonight this one will be finished. And then I'll have to come up with a new subject for next week. So please give me suggestions in the comments. Also, let me know if you want, if you want to see something in a colored pencil maybe, or if you want to keep uh, the pastels. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit of 640. This is Caput Morton Violet. It's a very dark purplish brownish tone that I really like. I'm going to add a little bit of that as a shading, shading tone. A little bit here. Eventually, I don't want that white outline around my drawing, so I want to get rid of all the outlines. little bit of shading so I'm just using very light pressure I don't press at all and this way I can slightly change the tone but you can still see the orange from underneath there show up and as this is a pretty small drawing I can't really rub me with my finger to blend everything in so I'll have to use the pencils more to do blending. Let's add a bit of a darker orange. I'm going in with 675. It's a bit more of a neutral toned orange. This I can use as a blending tone to blend in the darker purple with the brighter orange and it just smooths everything out. And feel free to ask me questions. Or, yeah. Anything that's on your mind, basically. <laughs> Zoom Boot Sims. I hope I'm saying that right. Oh, a Black Panther. I love Black Panthers. It's a shame, though, that I can never find good photos of it of them. So I've been looking for uh, Black Panther photos because I wanted to draw one, but I just couldn't find a good photo. So 
that's a bummer. I'm always looking for royalty free photos to use. Otherwise, I might have to go look for a photographer that I might be able to get um, permission from. Okay, so I want to add a bit more of a pinky, pinkish tone for the tip. So this is a very suitable color for that. So that's um, 642. I'm going to add that to the tip of the beak. I'm a little bit hay feverish, so my voice is a little cracky. I hope it's not annoying. Alright, so that looks nice. So I'm just creating a very even base layer. And then I can go on top with the lighter colors to do my details. Colored pencil are the most uh, popular, I think. Yes, I think so too. I think the colored pencil are a little bit more well known. At least in the US, I'm not sure. But they are more, uh, more popular on YouTube. That's definitely true. So I might do something in colored pencil. Alright, let's add a little bit of detail. So I'm going to get this color 105 which is a really light beige. I can use that to add a little bit of highlight to the tip of the beak right here. So I'm not aiming for this drawing to be a hyper-realistic drawing. That's not really realistic to do in live streams. But I do want it to look nice and colorful. And let's see, does pastel pencil work the same as colored pencils? No, they do not, though it does depend on the paper that you work on. So this is pastel matte. You can work with colored pencil uh, on pastel matte and then it works a little bit the same. Um, but when you work on regular white drawing paper with colored pencil, they work very differently then you really have to work from light to dark. So you're starting off light and then you do all the darker details around your lighter details. And with pastel pencils, you can do from light or from dark to light. I hope I said it right. So with color pencil, you work from light to dark. And then with pastel pencils, you work from dark to light. So the formula is very different. The ingredients are very different as well. A little bit more of that brighter orange. Then I also see a little bit of bright red. So I'm going to use some 305 and place it just about there. Maybe a little bit of detail on the rest of the beak. So last time, last week, I forgot to turn the saturation up so the colors looked very dull. Um, but this time I made sure it looked all right so the colors that you see now in the video are the accurate, accurate colors. All right, so I just got a notification that the video connection wasn't completely all right. Let me know if the quality is good. I didn't get that last week. So I hope everything's still working. Let me know. Hi, Mike. Oh, I'm not sure how to say your name. Somia? 
Do I say that right? Welcome to the stream. I'm glad to hear that. Um, Marion says, do you also work with pastel sticks or do you prefer pencils? I have worked with the sticks in the past um, when I would do like quick landscapes, but right now I don't really use them anymore. I prefer the pencils for any detailed work. The sticks are very nice though for backgrounds, but I'm just lazy and I forget to to take them out. So I just use the pencils. They give me a lot more control as well. So I like the sticks, but I prefer the pencils. I have to be a little bit careful here. Whoops. Let's adjust this a little bit. Okay, so right now the connection is good. Okay, great. So I don't want to hang on too long. Don't want to work too long on this small little area. I am going to do a little bit of highlighting. Let's do that with yellow on the very tip of the beak and the top side. Just a little bit of light. And then I'm going to move on to the rest. So let's keep going with the head. So the feathers are actually white, but they are not white. So when you look at the photo, you see lots of different tones in it. I see lots of yellow right here and here on the neck. And then on the body, I see a lot more blue. So I'm going to involve all those colors to make sure that he doesn't get flat. Also, I need to pick some gray. So let's see what I can find. I need this one. <laughs> I need that one. Should have picked this out before I started. Nope. Going to focus on cool grays. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to start with a little bit of white. Usually I don't really start off with white in my drawings, but I want this one to be a quickie. And I want it to be very rich in contrast. So let's just outline this bottom side and the top side with white. So this is a Faber Castell pit white. And I like this one. It's very opaque. You can also slightly adjust the shape of the head. That wasn't completely correct. Like that. And then we have some white here on the forehead. Around the eye, I'll fill, I'll fill in um, the eye a little bit later. Let's go around it for now. Make sure that shape is correct. And I'm just filling this in white. You can also tone it a little bit with blue later on. Just be quick with it. Right, let's look at the comments. Allison says, can we draw realistically with school pencils? Um, I wouldn't recommend it. Of course you can, you can try it. It does depend on the kind of pencils you have, but usually those um, school pencils you have at middle school or high school aren't the best quality. So maybe they won't really work um, well for layering, but I can't say because I don't know the brand. 
But usually uh, professional brands are a little bit easier when it comes to the layering process and the pigments. So it's definitely possible, but it might not be the easiest. So I'm now adding that um, beige tone, 105, as I can see a very yellow undertone here on the face. So I'm just filling that in with the beige. Quite a thick base layer to start with. Making sure to not go over the outlines. And then on top of this, I can do some detailing. And that yellow undertone, it basically goes all around the neck up until about there. So I'm going to continue the beige. Here at the top, I see a little bit of, a little bit of blue. So let's go around that. So for my base tones, I try to mimic the undertone that I see. Not looking at the details, but really just at the undertone. I can blend this in a little bit with my finger, like that. Make everything nice and smooth. And then let's continue that. So I do have to sharpen this because the pencils get dull pretty fast. So I use the Fabricastel Color Grip Sharpener that I really like. I do have to get some new ones though because all of mine are starting to get a bit dull. So I hope I will be able to finish this drawing without breaking points. It goes all right. All right, so let's continue this. Okay, so making sure to keep the shape, being really careful towards the outlines. Also, I have to try to not smudge my hand on the drawing, so that makes it a little bit harder to do this. All right, so keeping the beige up until there. I'm always following the growth of the feathers and the shape of the neck. All right, let's look at the comments. Na, 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 na. Hi, Ali. I hope I'm saying that right. Haifa or Haifa. Hi, Julie. Uh, Julie says, how do you choose your next subject? Do you work on commissions only? No, actually, I stopped doing commissions quite a while ago, so I don't do commissions at all anymore. So I do my pieces for Patreon. So that's basically my job now to do uh, Patreon tutorials. I also do Dutch tutorials for another company. So making tutorials is now my... Uh, my job basically and I choose the subjects based on what you guys want to see so that is it that's it basically and I also choose the animals that I'm currently inspired by at the moment I'm really into birds so I'm drawing a lot of birds but I also really keep an eye on what my students want to learn about. Okay, let's blend this in. 
let's work a bit more on this top side. That looks more bluish. So I'm going to add a little bit of 435, which is a very subtle light blue. Let's sharpen that. Elena says, did you already do some more oil paintings? I really like the one you showed on Facebook. Well, yes, actually, I started a new one today, um, a larger one, and that will be a rose. So I didn't post it yet. I think I will keep working on it a little more and then figure out how to photograph it well, because I found the lemur really hard to photograph. But I'm really enjoying the oil painting, so I'm going to continue with it and try to become really good at it. So yeah, I'm also really enjoying to be a little more original with my work, work more from my own imagination and my own photos like this one. And I feel like painting helps me um, improve that, hopefully. I'm not sure though if I'm going to do any um, oil painting videos. Maybe I should try. Let me know if you would like to see that. Okay, so a little bit of blue for the evening sun that is hitting the top side. I also see a little bit of blue right there. I'm just going to try to involve as many different colors as possible. And I also, also need to go a little darker here and there for some more contrast. I'm going to add a bit more of the 642 color. Really nice pink tone. So white is never completely white. Especially in such um, intense lighting. Like the evening sun right here. So I always try to put in purples and pinks and blues when I draw anything that's white, especially white fur or white feathers. And I'm just fading out my details a little bit. I don't want the, the brightest, sharpest details to be in there yet. So I'm just drawing some lines that will indicate the feather texture. Then blending that out again. Okay, I missed a lot of comments. Let's take a look. Um, Kritisha says, do you use or prefer Faber-Castell 48 shades color pencils? Which ones do you mean? I always work with the Faber-Castell Polychromos uh, color pencils. So, but I don't know how many shades I have. Definitely more than 48. But I do prefer the Faber-Castell pencils, so that's true. Okay, so there's still not enough contrast in here, so I need to put in some more of those darker um, lines that I see. Let's switch to 640. I also see some more yellow in there, so I might, I might have to put in a bit of a brighter yellow tone. But I just really like this one. So let's put that in, a little bit more shading. So I'm not going to try and copy the photo exactly. 
it's something that I want to start doing less. So I'm going to try to be a little more creative uh, with this one. Uh, Mike says, out of all the animals you have drawn, which one was the most challenging? I don't know if there's a specific animal that I find the most challenging, but I do have specific fur types that I really find very hard to draw, and that's basically um, curly fur. But especially white curly fur with colored pencil is something that I really find very hard. So I procrastinated quite a bit. I don't think I've... I haven't drawn a white curly furred animal with color pencil in a long time. Though I should practice it more. So definitely curly fur and animals that are very time consuming. Like uh, leopards. I don't find them hard, but they are very time consuming. And reptiles because of the, the skin texture. But every animal has something difficult to it. A little bit more shadow in this little area where not much light is hitting. Let's put in a bit more yellow. More of a brighter orange. Maybe go for this one. This is um, 680. Not really a yellow. More like a mix between orange and yellow. But still quite neutral. I'm glazing a little bit of that. On the head. On the cheek. So by glazing I add a little bit of this color. With very light pressure. And that way I'm just slightly changing the tone. It's here and there where I see the most yellow in the neck. Like right here. Zoha says, would you recommend soft pastels or pastel pencils for starting out with pastels? I find pastel pencils more easy to control, so I would say pastel pencils if you have to choose. So with soft pastels you can do really nice work, but you have to work very large in order to be able to put in detail. So it's also a bit more um, time consuming, I think, to work so large. So I would say to start out with some pastel pencils and just a little piece of pastel mat. I think that's a little bit easier to, uh, an easier way to get into pastels. Maybe a tad of red. 670. A tad of red to the upper side of the head. Still drawing lines to recreate the feathers a little bit. Have to blow away some of the dust. Where do I see more of that red? Not much. A little bit here. Hi Andrea, welcome to the stream. Um, what kind of paper and brand? Uh, so this, these are Stabilo Carbothello pastel pencils and the paper I use is Claire Fontaine pastel mat. Oh, thank you, me too bits. I hope I'm saying that right. Thank you for the compliment. Spy Bandit says, traditional or digital? So I have worked dig digitally for quite a while. 
I used to do a lot of digital art, but I got... Uh, well, I didn't really progress in it. And I lost my my interest for it. So right now I just prefer traditional art. Though I really love digital art as well. Definitely a big fan of it. Right, so this is starting to get quite nice and colorful so I'm almost ready to do some of the details on this part and then I can continue to the rest I'm really going to try to have this finished within an hour or so I hope I can manage hello from Philippines cool welcome to the stream Hello from South Africa. Wow. It's so cool. A lot of different different countries are in here. Thank you, Micah or Mika. Not sure how to pronounce that. Okay, so now I have a nice underlayer. I might have to go a little darker even. But I do want my swan to stand out from the background real nicely. So I do want it to be quite light. So I think I just can I can move on to white and just do some of the feather structure with white. If I had more time, I might first do a gray for the feather structure. But now, as I have to finish it soon, I'll just go in with white. And try to get some variation in the feathers this way. Let some little feathers stick out. So I can just highlight some of the feathers. They are very small. So my lines I keep very short. And I'm mainly focusing on the outer edges. It's very busy outside. I hope you can't hear. A lot of motors, a lot of cars. Everything's starting to open up again, which is great. So this edge is very important because we have that very dark background. So I want the neck here at the top to stand out very well. Let's spend some time on that. I hope that's in frame. Oh no, I have to put it down like this. Now you can see it. And I have to go around with my hand to make sure that I don't smudge the drawing. Hello from Canada. Thank you, Bernadette. I'd love to, vi to visit Canada one day. Hi, give me the avocado. I really like your username. All right. So that is nice. little bit of that on the bottom side as well for some reflecting light. And then I'm going to draw some random feathers on the center area of the neck as well.
looking at the direction that they go in because that's pretty important. Always draw in the right direction. Um, Norlene says, hello from Florida. Thank you. Uh, Bebby says, why don't you use pa pen pastels for the white? I'm not really a fan of pen pastels. I've tried them, but I feel I don't have enough control with them. And I also feel that they fill up the paper really fast and then I can't go on top anymore with my um, pencils to get enough detail. So with pen pastels, you can do really nice, soft, painterly drawings. And I really like details, so maybe it's just my technique, but I don't really like pen pastels at the moment. I really like my pencils. Okay. And the lighter you build up your drawing, your layers, the easier it gets to go on top with the lighter details. Right now, I pushed quite a lot with my first layer because I wanted it to I wanted the paper to fill up quite fast because I have to finish this soon. Otherwise, I would have added a bit more layers, but with lighter pressure. Because then I would probably have a bit more space to do these kind of light details. Oh, hey, Dragos Pepina Art. I'm still not sure how to say that. Nice to see you here. Hi, Farina. Um, why don't you use some glassine paper underneath your palm? This way you can rest your hands on the drawing. Yes, and I also have some, some other printer paper here. But actually, um, this is loose. So I taped my swan to a board. This is a, a foam board. And I think if I go like this, I might uh, move the, the board around. So I have to hold it with one hand and then go like this with the other hand to make sure that it doesn't move. So that's basically the reason. Usually I work with something like paper underneath my hand. But right now I have to keep my board very steady. So I have to hold it. Let's try. Maybe it works though. Let's just try this out. Well, it does go pretty well. Yeah. For some reason I thought for this one that it wouldn't work. But it works. Yeah, thanks for that. I'm just going to continue like this because actually this is a, a lot easier. I really like making things hard for myself, I think. And then when you want to move your hand, you do have to lift the paper up and then place it back down. Otherwise you can go and smudge the drawing. All right, so let's continue downwards. So here is where the chest is starting to look more blue. And then we have a shadow here. So I have to um, focus on that with my colors. Let's do a little bit of that beige here where we have the light hitting. So we have a light. 
and then we have a shadow and I'm basically going around that shadow so this is all light hitting the chest and the neck And then the shadow I'm going to fill in with blue. Yep, so then I'm switching to the 435. And this will all be blue. Looks really weird, weird at first. But then it will hopefully make sense when it all comes together. Okay, and then basically the whole chest I'm going to do with blue as a base tone. Oh, hi Natalie! How many duchies are there in the stream tonight? Usually there are not many fellow Dutch people watching my channel. But maybe there are more in the streams because it's a good time right now to watch streams. Okay, so let's continue this blue down. working pretty fast thank you tapas does not sure how to say that Oh, uh, thanks, Dragos. You're doing really well at the moment on Instagram and Facebook. So I'm sure your portrait will turn out really nice. Okay, so now it's just a matter of filling all this up with an even base layer before I can continue with any detail. So I'll just have to scribble and fill this all up. Oh, then actually right here we have a shadow of that neck going into the wings so let's put that in with a bit of that um, dark purpley tone make sure that I don't lose this line so let's put that in nice and dark right away Yeah, Beppy is from the Netherlands as well. Nice to see you here. And then switching to my blue again. So I am going to keep drawing until this is finished. So in advance, props to you if you're sticking to it all the way to the end. And feel free to recreate this drawing or draw, draw along with me. This is some sort of draw along, so... Feel free to do that as well.
All right, so I'll work on this some more when I finish the base layer. So let's continue. So let's sharpen that. The pencils get very dull very quick, so that's a con of working with pencils. You have to sharpen a lot, especially if you have to fill up a large area. Okay, so let's do this back line right now, the wings. Get that in nice and sharp. Now I have sharpened my pencils, so let's do this right away. Very careful with moving my paper. What do I dislike the most about commissions? Well, I don't really dislike commissions. I've enjoyed them a lot, but um, I do dislike, you know, the constant emailing back and forth to get things nice and sorted out, to pick out reference photos and just waiting for payments. And I also really dislike shipping the drawings because so much can go wrong with the shipping. Fortunately, fortunately, that has never happened before. I would never have had a drawing uh, get damaged, but still the shipping for me is very nerve wracking. So especially that. And here we have an area on the wing that looks more pinkish, but still I see a blue undertone in there. So I'm just going to continue with the blue all the way. Natalie says, don't you have your pencils breaking a lot while sharpening? Well, no, actually I don't. I really like these sharpeners. And when I feel my pencils are starting to break, that's usually um, because it's filled up. So I have to empty it because when it's all filled up, uh, it doesn't sharpen well anymore or because the blades get dull and then I just get a new one. I have like six or seven or of these lying around my studio. So I can always pick a new one when one gets dull. But no, this is one of the only sharpeners that I don't really have problems with. Let's sharpen again. It looks really weird now with the blue. But it will all come together in the end. I just have to fill this up. Ja, Beppi, ik vind de bloemen ook heel leuk om te tekenen. Ik zou er wel meer willen doen. 
Magnolia vond ik ook wel uh, heel geslaagd. Alright, scribble. Sharpening again. So if you have trouble sharpening your pastel pencils, um, definitely have a look at the Faber-Castell color grip sharpener. And otherwise, just make sure that the blades of your sharpener isn't dull, because then your pencils will break. Also, there might be a defect in your pencil. So the lead might be broken inside. Okay, so let's get this filled up. Very boring to watch. But I'm almost there. Alright. So let's blend this in a little. So I don't push hard when I blend. Because I don't want to saturate the tooth of the paper. Also, I don't want to smudge the edges. Okay. Let's blow off the dust real quick. <laughs> Alright, so that's it for the base layer, but it's very flat, so now it needs a lot more color and some more con contrast as well. Maybe some extra gray. Maybe some violet is nice to put in. Let's search for my violet where I have it. <laughs> I lost my violets. Ah, there it is. My violet fabric is still pit, which I really love. The Stabilo uh, don't have a shade like this. In the range, so I really like adding the Faber Castell Pit 138 for any bright violet areas. For instance, right here, I see a little bit of purple, so I can use it here and there to do some glazing. Just going to try to be bold with my colors. Just a tad of that. Just because I like the tone. Push that in a little. Okay. Then I also see a little bit of pink here and there, so I'm adding 681, which is a really nice pink tone. Very neutral. With this, I can can put in, bring in some light again. Lighten up the chest in the center area where a little bit of light is hitting.
I'm being quite quick with this. Follow a bit of the structure that I see in there. I see this rounded shape in the chest. Trying to imitate some of those shapes. Bring back some light. Would you say there's a huge difference between printer paper pastel drawings and pastel matte pastel drawings? Well, I've never tried pastel drawing on printer paper, but it just it's it's too smooth, so the pastel won't stick to it. So you can't layer. And if you want to get a realistic result with pastel pencils, you have to be able to layer lots of layers on top of each other. Otherwise, you would probably end up with just something like this, like just the base, and then you won't be able to go on top anymore. So there's a huge difference in papers, and I definitely would not recommend to do pastel drawings on printer paper because it just doesn't work. Putting a bit of that wing shape in here. Okay, so I need more dark. I need something to contrast the blue. So let's put in a color that I've also used in this uh, top half of the neck, just to make sure that everything blends together a bit more. So I'm going to put in 642. Really lovely color, it works really well. With the blue, I'm just going to add some shading. Keeping an eye on the structure that I see in the feathers, but the feathers are very smooth here on the chest, so I don't really see any feather texture. What would it tell now? to my five, oh, five years ago. Okay, so what would I tell myself now that I wanted to hear five years ago? Um, maybe don't be so insecure about yourself because I was very insecure. And everything will turn out fine in the end. Five years ago, I just started with drawing or with my business in drawing, actually. So I, wa I had no idea what I was doing. And I used to compare myself all the time to artists that had more followers than me and that were more successful. So I would recommend to anyone uh, to not do that. So don't compare yourself to others. You can be inspired by others, 
but don't copy them and don't get insecure by the amount of followers someone else has. So I just keep layering this until I find there's enough of a balance in the color. I want to get rid of some of the blue, so I'm using this color to contrast it a little bit. I'm working very lightly because this is a very opaque color. Add a little bit of this to the bottom side as well. I want this to be a little bit in shadow, so let's darken this all up. All right, so I feel like this is a little bit better when you compare it to 10 minutes ago. So right now everything has a little bit more shape, more 3D to it. You really see this light coming through now, so this color really works. I do need a little bit more of that yellow tone that I also used in the top part of the neck. So I'm going to add just a tad of this um, 680 color because I see a bit of like orange, orangey tone. It might not work well with the blue. Let's see how that turns out. Orange and blue together might just turn out a little bit green. But in this case, I don't really mind. Because there is green in the background. And to make your subject fit in with the background, it will probably have to involve some of the background color into the subject. So I might have to do that as well. I think I'm going to pick some green and put that in this one as a shadow color. After this orange tone. A little bit of orange into the light area. little bit right there. All right, so I'm going to pick a little bit of green. Um, the green that I've used most on the background. So actually I can't remember which one that was. Was it this one? Not sure. Or this one. Let's go for something darker. Let's go for this one. 595. And I'm not sure if that was the green that I've used in the background. I'm going to glaze a little bit, just a tiny little bit on the chest. shadow areas. This is a bluish looking green, so it fits well with the blue. But I don't want too much of it in this one. Just a little bit. Blend that in. 
this, it's out of green. All right. Um, Andrea says, in larger surfaces, why don't you use pastel sticks instead of pastels? Um, I feel like I don't have a lot of control when using the sticks and also they fill up the paper quite fast so then I can't go on top anymore and do my very fine details and I do work pretty small most of the time this is also pretty small drawing so I feel like with the sticks I can't control the smaller areas good enough I'm basically very much a control freak so <laughs> that's why I don't use the sticks even for larger drawings but I've used them in the past though using a little bit of 770 Payne's gray for the darkest shadows on the chest so now I'm going to hype up the contrast a little bit more before I move on to the highlights I'm just following the shape of the feathers a little bit, so like this. If anyone's in interested, I probably will put this one up for sale for anyone who wants to own it. Probably put it up for a small price. darken up the shadow here as well watching from the Philippines yay another one from the Philippines very cool A little bit of shadow in the lighter areas as well. Put some texture in the feathers. Okay, so now I'm just going con to continue like this all over the body, add some texture and some shadow in between the feathers. Then after that I can go in with my lighter colors and do the highlighting. And then we're already quite far with this actually, it's going quite fast. I think I will need another half an hour, maybe. I hope. Watching from Atlanta, USA. Welcome. So cool to have so many people from different countries joining. So here we have a bit of uh, a wing detail. So let's put that in. So I want the focus of the viewer's eye to be here on the head. So I'm going to try to not make the body too detailed. Going to darken this up.
Okay, I don't want too many different layers on this. When you do too much blending or too many layers, it might start to look a little bit muddy. So I think I'm just going to get started with some highlights and then I can always go back to it and darken up my darks if I want to. definitely feel like the chest now just needs some neutral gray and start with I might go for lighter gray where do I have my lighter grays should have picked my colors before I started nope it's not the right one Oops, this one, 110, very light gray. Thank you, Norlene. Starting to come together, but I'm not there yet. Definitely not there yet. So I'm going to pick 110 and do some little details, focus on the edges a little bit more, brightening up the edge of the chest. The highlight areas I'll probably have to put in with white. Probably also have to pick up my beige again. But all this chest feather I can put in with gray. following the rounded shape of the neck and then basically drawing small lines that will indicate the feathers a little bit but I'm definitely not going for a photo or a hyper realistic look on this one now I also don't want to blend too much anymore because it, then I'm just blending out all the details I just put in so no blending anymore or as little as possible and just doing the details with the pencils let's see if I missed any questions do I think tracing is cheating? I'm tracing the outlines of my drawings and I was accused lots of times that I'm not creating real art. Oh yeah, that's a very much spoken about a subject, I feel. Um, no, it's not cheating, definitely not, because I do trace a lot of my outlines as well. Especially when I'm making tutorials that are not specifically focused on how to sketch, but more about how to use colors um, so it's definitely not cheating you can figure out right away if someone can draw or not by the way they use colors and values and contrasts so if you've never drawn before and you've traced the outlines perfectly you have perfect proportions um, but you don't use your colors right, it will not be a realistic drawing. Tracing is just a way for me to speed up the process if I don't have time to sketch. But it's not something that I do because I can't draw. So I feel like that's what people think sometimes, that artists trace because they can't draw. But that's, that's definitely not the case. So I just ignore people who say that tracing is cheating because they don't know. They have no idea. I do think though that it's very important to keep practicing 
your own freehanding skills. This one I freehanded and I feel it's really good to do that uh, once in a while so you don't lose that skill. But there's no cheating in art. Alright, so I'm actually pretty curious to, to um, read what you guys think of that uh, tracing subject. Do you trace your work or don't you trace? What do you think of it? Do you use grids or do you freehand all your work? Let me know, I'm pretty curious. Highlighting the back a little bit, though I don't want too much attention on the back. So I think I'm going to leave this area very undetailed. And let's do a little bit of highlighting here on the wing. And Natalie says, I'm doing the same for my drawings. I noticed with a, a raster or a grid, even if I make the lines really light, sometimes I still see them and tracing the outlines prevents that. Yeah, definitely. I don't like using grids because of that, because you have to draw out the grids and then you have to get rid of the lines and sometimes that doesn't really, they don't go away. So I don't really work with grids because of that. It just, I'm too lazy for that. Do I ever use colored pencil on top of pastels? I notice that I find it really hard to make small details with pastel pencils and I'll always change to polychromos for that. Yes, I do like to use colored pencil on top of pastels. I did it for my uh, red panda drawing, but only on the body area. The face I just did with colored pencil only. But yeah, it's a really nice technique to do color pencil on top of pastels. So if you're feeling better doing that, keep continuing and do that. It's getting real colorful now. It's definitely out of my comfort zone. Usually I stay a bit more neutral with the colors that I pick. I think I'll have to get some of the um, 105 back, the beige, and also add some of that uh, to create a bit more of a continuous line in the drawing. I also have to add some of this into this highlight. So let's sharpen this. Norlene says anyone can trace. It's the filling in that makes the art. Yes, I agree with that. And eventually the end result is what matters, right? And as long as you're not frauding, frauding, is that a word? As long as you're not a fraud and copying others' work, it's totally okay to do your drawings the way you want to.
a little bit of light here on the center area of the chest highlighting some of the feathers here Nanette says, I grid, but not on my good paper. I transfer my drawing onto, onto pastel mat. Yeah, that's also a really good technique. Do your tracing or your grid or your sketch first on another piece of cheap paper. And then you can easily transfer onto your good paper so you don't waste your good paper if the grid goes wrong. So that's a really good way to do it as well. Okay, I'm going to get some white now and do some of the brighter highlights with white. Oh, I also have to fill in the eye. Almost forgot that. Let's make this really sharp now. So now this sharpener is starting to get a little bit older, so it's getting dull. So now I feel it's a little bit more difficult to sharpen my pencil right, so I'll have to place a new order and get some new ones. <sighs> Sorry, I had to blow off the dust. And now I'm going to do some really good highlights to create better transitions between the shadow parts and the highlight parts make some of the feathers stand out really well by the way if you're not a member over on patreon yet have a look at the description over on patreon i do loads of these different projects in color pencil but also in pastels Without answering the questions, of course, so then I just talk you through um, the process, purely focusing on teaching. So if you want to become a member, it starts at only $4, so that's very little money. And then you get instant access to hundreds of hours of these projects that are on there already. And then I do one new tutorial for each tier every month and basically it's my patreon members that allow me to do this these live streams otherwise i definitely wouldn't have the time to do this i would be working on commissions so if there's any patreon members watching thank you so much for your support because it really helps me do these drawings for you. I'm really enjoying this one. So it's important that also some of the hairs or the feathers in the shadow parts are highlighted. Just a little less bright. I think you learn from all methods. Yeah, definitely. Even tracing. Tracing can teach you a lot. Because it will teach you the exact shapes. By tracing something a few times. 
it might actually improve your freehanding skills. So ever since I started tracing, my freehanding skills have really, really improved. So that's really nice, actually. Highlighting the very start of the wing right here. Maybe this edge as well. I don't want to pull pull too much attention away from the head. So I'll keep this body area very impressionistic. Is that the right word? I'm not sure. Just keep it very undetailed. Did I notice as well as a lot of people started drawing since COVID-19 and it's getting harder and harder to get noticed? Yes, I definitely noticed a lot of people started drawing. But actually for me that has been really good because um, it has really helped growing my Patreon following. So I can't complain about that. I'm really happy about that. Um... I think it has always been hard to get noticed. Maybe it's more because of the algorithms that have been changing this year. I'm not sure if it's because of COVID. But more people have been drawing. Yeah, definitely. But I'm not sure if more people have started posting as well. That might be the case, I'm not sure. Back to my beige. feel like I can add a little bit more beige to contrast the yellow here and there. Or the, the blue, I mean. But I think I'm almost there. It looks quite painterly, but I quite like that for this drawing. Uh, I do have to put in the eyes, so let's do that as well. I'm going to do the eye with a combination of this Caput Mortem Violet color and a little bit of black. And I also have to put in a nice highlight, and I'm going to do that with blue. So let's sharpen this blue. Make sure it's very sharp so I can put in a nice bright highlight. And actually let's do the highlight first. A bit of blue there. Then I can always adjust the shape of that by going around it. Filling in the eye with a base layer of the 640 color. It's a really nice almond shape eye. Starting with this color because just black can look a little bit too flat. So now I can fill up the very darkest parts like the eyelids and the pupil. Put in the pupil in the center. It's very small, so I don't have much space. The most important thing is that the eye has some expression to it. Some character. That's nice. Very quick little eye. 
you don't need much. He does an eyelid around it, like that. I think I'm going to put a little bit of the blue more into the, the head area. And then I think I'm almost there. So the body is very blue. Maybe it's even a little bit too blue. But it does look nice and artsy, so let's just roll with it. Let's keep it this way. Um, I need to darken up this. So this uh, shadow in the inner inner uh, corner of the neck, that needs to be darker. So let's darken that up. And I'm going to use 770 Paints Gray. make this shadow fit with the body and then I can add some extra little texture in the feathers you can basically make it as detailed as you want now I'll keep adding some details for a little bit and add some or answer some final questions. I will probably do something with a color pencil for next week and the week after. So I won't have time to do something very detailed or something very large. Something like this with color pencil would take me like 10 hours to do so I'll need to go for something small like an eye or something like that so I will pick a nice eye to do in colored pencil do I prefer drawing or painting mm, well I haven't been painting for too long I started painting two weeks ago so I think I can't really say yet I do really enjoy painting so I do painting uh, purely for myself at the moment so there's no pressure yet so I think that also makes it a lot more fun I feel but drawing is still very fun to me it's just uh, there's a lot more pressure on it But I can't choose. I really can't choose. <laughs> right, some more final little details. Ah, uh, thank you, Dragos. Still butchering your name, sorry. That's so nice to hear. Yeah, four years ago my channel was very popular and then it all uh, basically crashed a little bit. And that's purely because I changed my uh, subjects a lot. So I used to do really, uh, really popular drawings. 
But then I figured that I didn't find those type of drawings fun to draw anymore. So I switched to very detailed work. But that's not really what my viewers at that time wanted to see. So then my, uh, my channel crashed. But I don't really care about that anymore, actually. I really enjoy just doing what I like. And if that means that there is a smaller audience for it, so be it. Okay, so what do you what do you guys think of this? Do you think it's finished? I think it's pretty finished. Very painterly for my liking. I really enjoy this. So as always, the stream will stay online. So if you want to rewatch it or rewatch the first part, feel free to do so. Feel free to recreate this drawing if you want to. Maybe I should make some little grass grasses overlap the chest. So let's do that for some final detail. Take a bit of green and just draw in some grass because otherwise it just looks a little bit flat. Also, there's some grass out of its beak just hanging out like that. Maybe take my darker green as well. And some highlighting. Okay. All right, so I think I'm going to call this done and call it a night still have to do my workout so I think I'm going to call this finished I really oh wait I have to remove the tape it's a very important part of the process so let's take off the tape let's hope it works that I can do it without damaging anything all right so I did some very weird tape around the edges of my board That was a bad idea. Okay, let's take that off. It's very strong tape. my board. Let's remove the tape from the drawing. Okay, let's go. Okay, so that's one. Okay, that one didn't work. Now the top ones. 
I should have done this a little better. Okay, wait. Okay, top side. And then the bottom. Okay. All right. So that's it. That looks a little better. Now it looks like a drawing. All right. So that is the end result. I hope you like it. And then I'm going to call it a day. So thank you so much for watching. I'm really tired. I'm going to go to bed. And uh, then I will see you next Tuesday, um, same time, with a new drawing that will probably be a colored pencil drawing, uh, something like an eye or something close up. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next stream. And let's take this off.